Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell. And today I just kind of wanted to pull things back in for a moment. Uh, I've been making videos in support of the Younger Dryas Impact uh, recently, like with the, with the Megafauna stuff. Uh, but I haven't really made a video directly linking the Younger Dryas Impact to other relevant topics in a long time, like the Carolina Bays. Well, I had some interesting thoughts and a few surprises while listening to another podcast recently, and, and I want to go ahead and and record them here on the YouTube channel before I forget, and they are just totally lost to the winds of time. Uh, so as as I'm sure most of you already know, Randall Carlson has, um, has his own podcast now, thanks to the help of Kyle and Russ Allen over at the Brothers of the Serpent podcast. Uh, they recognize the need to give us all the Randall that we can handle and uh, helped put a plan into motion to bring us RC on a more consistent basis. So kudos to those guys, uh, you know, much respect and uh, best of luck to Cosmographia. Anyways, um, I was listening to an episode, it was actually episodes 32 and 33, uh, where they were discussing the 2013 paper by Wu et al., uh, which actually includes two names, uh, two of the authors we've mentioned here on previous videos, uh, Mr. Malcolm LeCompte, or Dr. Malcolm LeCompte, and uh, Mark uh, Demetroff, uh, which is titled Origin and Provenance of Spherules and Magnetic Grains at the Younger Dryas Boundary. Uh, and as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and head over uh, to the Cosmic Tusks bib uh, to pull up the actual paper for a moment. All right, if you guys haven't bookmarked this site uh, yet, uh, you need to go ahead and click on the link above, or I'll have it in the description below, uh, and go ahead and do that right now. Uh, you know, this is created by, by George Howard and maintained uh, down under by Mark Young. Uh, this is the most comprehensive bibliography of uh, peer-reviewed journal articles uh, that you will find on the internet concerning the Younger Dryas Impact. Uh, you know, and it's super simple to use. You know, you just basically scroll down um, everything is color coded. You have green for supporting articles. You have yellow for critical and red for refuting the younger driest impact. Uh, find the paper that you're looking for. Uh, and ours, ours was written in 2013. So let me go there. Uh, 2013. Here is Wu et al. Here's the paper that we're looking for. And you just click it. You know, this is, uh, <laughs> you know, this is reference material at your fingertips. Now, like with most peer-reviewed science journal articles, uh, the text is packed with confusing science jargon. Uh, a little hack that I picked up in grad school uh, to see if an article has what you're looking for is to read the abstract of the article of interest first, then check out the conclusion at the end of, end of the paper next. Um, now, I know from reading the abstract that this, this paper focuses on impact proxies from various sites around the globe. Uh, one site in particular is in Pennsylvania, where there is a very strong indication that the parent material that makes up the proxies found there can be sourced from the Quebecia or Quebecian terrain in the Grenville province of uh, northeastern North America. Now, if I scroll down to the conclusion, uh, there's a few more lines of interest, uh, interesting information that we should that should be noted. Uh, before we move on. Uh, and as you can see, you know, it's just packed full of great information. I highly suggest anybody go to the, you know, go to the Cosmic Tusk, go to the bib and, and, and read this paper on your own. Um, but like I said, I'm just interested in a few lines in the conclusion right now. Uh, here's this, the discussion. And uh, here is the, here's the conclusion. And like I said, right here is what I was interested in. This is kind of what tipped me off. You know, our evidence, our as evidence thus suggests that the impact took place near the southern margin of the Laurentide ice sheet, as well as our findings are consistent with the hypothesis of Firestone et al. that multiple impacts occurred at around 12.9 Ka, the YD onset, centered in the northeastern United States. So yes, indeed, this is a very important paper and worthy of our discussion. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so basically what the paper was saying is that some of the Younger Dryas proxy material uh, recovered down in Pennsylvania had chemical signatures matching this area of Canada. Uh, you can see here the orange area uh, is the extent of the Granville Providence of Bedrock. 
Uh, and when I pulled up this map, uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was look for areas of missing bedrock. And uh, specifically from the, you know, the Quebecia terrain, uh, which was mentioned specifically in the in the paper. And sure enough, right here at, at Lac St. John, uh, which is precisely the area the guys over at Cosmographia were discussing, there appears to be some missing Providence material. Um, you can see it right here in this yellow, you know, this yellow color right here. And this is huge. This is huge in its own right and definitely deserves to be investigated further. You know, kudos to those guys uh, for, for pointing that out. Uh, but what really caught my eyes uh, was how abruptly the Grenville province cuts off right here at the Great Lakes. It just cuts off right there, directly in line with Saginaw Bay. <laughs> okay. Now, you don't have to be, you don't have to have a PhD in structural geology to determine that at one time the Granville province stretched much farther into the North American continent. And at some point, anything to the southwest of this cutoff right here, uh, a ton of bedrock material was removed. You know, how much? Who knows? But what on earth could have happened to remove that much of the Granville province so cleanly? <laughs> Oops. Well, a major impact in the Laurentide Ice Sheet directly over the Michigan area could have done it. Uh, you know, just to back out and show that again, you know, here, here's the cutoff. This is the Michigan area. Here's Saginaw Bay. And there we have that Michigan basin right in our face once again. Um, the immediate shock of the impact into the surface of the Laurentide Ice Sheet likely caused the deformation of the once horizontal sandstone bedrock under the Great Lakes region, uh, creating the Michigan Basin as we see it today. Uh, you can see, I, you, you click on the link above, I have a whole video on this right here. Um, and yeah, definitely we have the Michigan Basin here right on this, you know, right there, right there. Uh, the ejected chunks of Laurentide ice from the outer edges of the impact zone got launched across the atmosphere to crash back down into sandy terrain, created, creating the Carolina Bays to the east and the Nebraska rainwater basins to the west, as well as leaving behind a magnetic anomaly that can only be compared to the Chicxulub Lub dinosaur killer from 65 million years ago. Um, thank goodness that this event likely took place on top of an ice sheet and not onto solid ground or a shallow sea. Um, I, I highly doubt that we would be here talking about this today if it had. Um, the unthinkable amount of glacial meltwater uh, that rushed in to fill the void created by the initial glacial impact quickly reshaped the entire area, including the Great Lakes themselves. Uh, and the region, the, the southern margin of the Grenville uh, province along the now St. Lawrence River, you know, this is a glacial flood route, uh, which eventually shot out into the North Atlantic, you know, dis disrupting the Gulf Stream, uh, which, by the way, is one of the most widely accepted causes of the Younger Dryas cooling event. So <laughs> there we go again. Uh, so so there you have it, guys, you know, Michigan or bust, you know, the evidence is there. Um, yes, much of it has been misidentified to fit the strict uniformitarian dogma of the 20th century, but the 21st century is well underway, and we right now have access to more information than anyone ever to have walked the planet before us. Uh, and it's right here at our fingertips. You know, help get this information to the people who can make these corrections and these reassessments uh, and hold them accountable. You know, and I, and I really don't care who gets the credit for it. You know, I'm, I'm not doing this to gain fame and notoriety. You know, I'm, I'm an introvert. You know, I really, <laughs> I really can't stand people. Um, so, you know, but the story is there and it needs to be identified and corrected. Uh, so here you go. You know, do with it as you will. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'll leave a link to George uh, Howard's bibliography in the description below. Send it out to anyone that you know who questions the Younger Dryas Impact event and tell them to have a look for themselves. You know, the writing is on the wall, or, or I guess I should say it's on the ground. And uh, when it's all said and done, I don't want anyone to say that we didn't think big enough. All right, we'll catch you next time, guys. Bye.